Hi, and welcome to this quick tool review. This time around, we'll be reviewing the most important tool for any machinist to have, and that tool is information. And a lot of that information is only gleaned by years of experience, learning all the tricks and the solutions to interesting and difficult problems. Uh, but when it comes right down to it, there's a fundamental set of information that we all need as machinists to do our jobs, which is the basic data about threads and uh, tapers and all of the other standardized objects that uh, we try to make. The typical go-to solution is the machinery's handbook, which we're all very familiar with, I'm sure. Uh, however, the machinery's handbook, as good as it is, is almost 3,000 pages long, and finding something in a hurry can be challenging. In addition, the pages are very thin, and uh, if you've got greasy hands, you will ruin them pretty quickly. Uh, so if you're in the middle of a project and you're trying to use the machinery's handbook, not always the best solution, especially for data that is really commonly available. And there is a solution to this problem. That solution is the series of books, Engineer's Black Book series. And uh, this one is a special edition Bar Z Summer Bash version that they gave me for attending the bash. Uh, but uh, it's similar in every other way to the normal version that uh, they sell on their website. The normal size versions are this big, and this is the large text version for people with eyesight like mine. <laughs> um, this is the fastener version, and the smaller versions of the books come with uh, a free template guide in the back. Like the fastener version comes with something that shows you diameters and thread pitch that you can use to quickly measure screws and find out what dimensions they are. And uh, this book is really handy. It has every common and not so common type of fastener and all the dimensions for the common sizes for all of the threads. And that is a really handy reference when you're trying to lay something out. This book I more often keep next to my computer where I'm doing the drawings than leave out here in the shop, but uh, it would be equally useful out here, I guess. It's just that I usually put all that information on my drawings, so I'm looking it up then. Uh, you could find this information in the Machinery's Handbook, but this really distills it down nicely, and it includes not as common things like rivets and washer sizes and the different styles of washers. Pretty handy book. This is the one... Uh, that I do keep out here, and this is the one that's a go-to all the time. And uh, I just marked off some pages. You can see I marked off like half the book because everything in this book is interesting. But let me just jump to a couple. So here is a really common size chart. And oh, I forgot to mention, these books, the pages are all coded. So uh, even if you have grease or coolant on your hands in non-excessive amounts, uh, you can just wipe it off the page and it comes off for the most part. You can see this one's still in really good condition. Um, the, uh, this is a drill size chart and we're all familiar with these. But the interesting thing about this one is it goes all the way up to four inches and covers common uh, tap and thread size. Four inch, four thread per inch UNC threads. Who would have known that the uh, tap drill for that is 3.375. I mean, you can look it up in the machinery's handbook, but the common tables and charts we keep out in the shop typically don't go up that high, and I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, the next one, it's got thread forms, including all the dimensions and relationships of dimensions of the various thread forms, uh, Acme, Stub Acme, Buttress, of various types, English, American, API, I haven't even heard of some of these. The gas threads, which are round bottoms, which I hadn't, uh, I wasn't aware of either. Um, and finally, the, the isometric and uh, uh, standard ones that we're all used to. Uh, really handy reference if you're trying to figure out what specific dimensions of a thread are. Again, you can look all this up in the machinery's handbook, but these are all in different sections of the handbook. If you're trying to flip through this really quickly, which I often do when I'm trying to lay things out in CAD, um, that it's not as convenient. This is all in one place. It's really handy. Uh, they cover taps and tapping, uh, including uh, all the different formulas to calculate the proper tap size for the threads you're interested in based on the percentage of full threads you're looking for. Uh, really handy, very useful reference in a pinch if you don't want to go look up uh, a standard 
you know, the standard 70% or approximately 70% tap or 75% tap, whatever it is, uh, on, on this table right here, uh, which most of us have available. They have drill point sharpening, and uh, if you bought this... If you bought this book in the smaller form, it would come with this drill uh, cutting guide and drill size with the book, but it doesn't here, and they just tell you how to uh, common techniques for grinding on a hand grinder, uh, you know, your standard bench grinder, how to grind a drill bit. Pretty handy. Uh, here's the screw dimension thing, and uh, they've got the really common ones here, which is the dimensions for so socket head screws and countersinks. And that's something I'm always trying to figure out uh, when I'm making something. If I haven't specced it in a drawing, which I don't always remember to do, what's the countersink depth? How wide does the countersink for a standard Allen uh, cap screw? Anyways, thought that was handy. There's more uh, fasteners in here, hole saw sizes and whatnot. Um, tapers. Uh, not something I go to every day, but something I'm going to go to very soon because uh, I need to, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to leave this page marked because uh, I've got another project coming up real quick where I need to modify some Morse tapers to add a tang to them because all of the uh, lathe tools I've got are designed actually for draw bars and that's not very helpful because I can't eject them. Uh, here is... Oh key dimensions and how deep they should be done. So if you're in a pinch, you need to know for square keyways in a shaft, information's here. V-belt information based on common dimensions of all the V-belt sizes. Geometrical constructions, which are really handy uh, if you're trying to lay out something on a part. They've got a bunch of... Uh, Geometric shortcuts, uh, tools to bisect the line or construct a perpendicular to a straight line at its end point X. That's really handy. I didn't, I'd never run across that one before. Bisection common, but if you forget, you can look it up in a pinch. Uh, inscribing squares, octagons, hexagons, dodeca, uh, de decagons, uh, all sorts of things. Very handy to have in a pinch if you just want to look it up. Volumes of various devices. Here are, uh, here are standard uh, thread limit, uh, fit limits for fits, and I thought this was kind of interesting. If you're looking for a interference fit or a uh, sliding fit, this tells you the various standards and how m what percentage uh, uh, you're supposed to be over or above based on the diameter of the parts. And uh, this, these charts are based on one inch, but they give you the specific... Uh, the specific fit chart tables here based on actual diameter because it's actually a percentage not an absolute for every diameter it's a percentage of the whole diameter for a loose slip fit all the way to a really tight slip fit and here are interference fits really handy and i'm always kind of curious about the interference fits like uh, how many thousands over should you go and i typically just estimate but uh, if you want to look it up in the book Uh, here is strengths for bolt size. So if you're designing a project real quick and you're not sure what size bolt you need based on the grade for how strong it needs to be, really handy to have. So you pick a bolt that's strong enough. Common workshop metal explanation and what it's useful for and what its strengths and weaknesses are. Covered. Common engineering plastic, same sort of thing. Advantages, disadvantages, useful features of a bunch of uh, commercial grade plastic. So if you've got a stock like I do and you grab a piece and you wonder, will this work for what I'm doing? You can look it up. Uh, engineering adhesives, pretty handy. And uh, whether what kind of prep you need or, or don't need for the, the specific, uh, specific adhesive, also really handy. Grinding wheel markings uh, help you decipher grinding wheel markings if you can't remember what each of the digits means. They explain it in here. And, go, and they not only have that, but they have uh, all the different types of grinding pieces and a chart to look up uh, there, somewhere in here. I missed it. Uh, was to translate between the different manufacturers' cutting, uh, cutting wheels. Uh, and then they tell you here about hardness versus toughness of the various materials on inserts. And they have a huge section in the back of the book here um, about inserts and all of the related uh, features of inserts, including different manufacturers' grades, coating grades, and that sort of thing. Uh, they cover all the coatings here and why you might want one over the other. Pretty handy. And then 
they've got a really extensive section about the, the standardized names for all the tool holders for turning. So if you're looking for a specific one, uh, you can just look it up here real quick and the inserts that go with them. And finally, uh, or nearly finally, uh, engineering drawing markings the, based on the standard. And uh, I can't always remember some of the common ones. When I took the class in school, uh, they made us memorize them, but I forget the ones you don't use very often. You can look it up here in a pinch. Out in the shop where you're trying to work on a drawing, that's really handy. And uh, anyways, that is it for this book. Highly recommended. It is really handy. It's got thicker than average paper that's coated and cleanable. So uh, it works great out here in the environment of the shop. They have large versions and they have small versions that are slightly less expensive. The uh, advantage of the large versions is, of course, for people with eyes like mine, the print's all larger. Same content. Anyways, hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.